as they break on a rise news at that time uh, for the press preview a fresh look on what's on the front pages pages of the paper and we start with our sister publication this day newspaper that has on its front page article killings insecurity persist because previous acts have not been punished uh let's look at the riders uh we've talked about that quite a bit it says, says authorities must go beyond issuing threats declares everyone is vulnerable uh, on PDP crisis vows to bring party together under a formidable umbrella just down that story uh, Kwankwaso Nigerians eager to chase out APC in 2023 and of course you see that picture there with Nana Kufado the outgoing ECOWAS chairman uh, in a handshake with uh, uh, our own dear vice president Yemi Oshibajo. Let's look at some other stories. It says uh, at, the, at the top mast, Komolafe with takeover of 29 assets. Indigenous participation in Nigeria's gas sector now 50%. And then if you come below, PDP BOT chairman recommends high power delegation led by Atiku Okoa to visit Wike, the Wike thing is still reverberating. Recovered 1.8 billion naira. Uh, recall uh, Buratai for investigation. PDP tells Buhari urges APC, alleges APC is haven for treasury looters. I think uh, Buratai has denied that allegation. Okay, over to you, Ken. The Punch newspaper is leading with PDP orders. Panel to beg Wike, drop Okoa. Governor's loyalists insist. And the 28 die in Ogun State. Yobe Road crashes. And that's according to the FRSC. And it's cautioned travelers to drive slowly. Years after controversy surrounds 30, years after rather, uh, controversy surrounds 300 billion naira textile revival fund. Find that report on page six. And uh, this is uh, gunmen abduct two Edo Catholic priests and six. And residents. All right, let's look at the Guardian. The Guardian it says stakeholders fear Lekki Seaport will replicate a Papa pain. So one wonders why that is so. It has about four riders. Infrastructure evacuation concerns undermine project viability. Operator seeks government intervention on cargo evacuation system. Experts say fourth mainland bridge uh, green rail line will address concerns. Lagos to implement master plan in six months involves stakeholders, says uh, committee head. All right, I think that's what we'll take from. Okay, let's look at some more stories. 2023, coalition warns Tinubu over risk of losing northern Christians. Igbo, not ready for presidency. This is Kwan Kwaso. You can read that on page 27. That's what he's saying. A quiet bomb APC chairman denounced call for a Guinea's removal, say INEC chief fair. And time for prayers, not blame game. Jonathan Oshibajo, uh, tell Nigerians. This is the Nation newspaper. It's leading with PDP crisis. Atiku forecloses discussion on office sharing. Oshun 2022 Air Force planes to convey sensitive materials. And INEC holds mark accreditation. Uh, 1.4 trillion naira recovered from debtors. And that's according to the Asset Management Company of Nigeria. All right, leadership newspaper. Uh, CSO's IPAC raised concerns over electoral four lines. With two riders there, it says, decry vote buying, voter party want electoral offenders prosecuted, seek improvement in collation of election results, electronic transmission, and poor infrastructure, electricity, others hampering effectiveness of e-learning. Let's look at some other stories there. It says, um, uh, Shiroro attack. We counted 48 bodies. The youth leader is saying that. And conflicting court rulings hamper Am Amcon's $5 trillion debt recovery drive. Well, let's take a look at the international papers. The Times, a sex scandal revitalizes rebel plot to topple PM. And Ukraine in stronghold Lysychansk has fallen to the Russian invaders. The Daily Telegraph, uh, PM facing cabinet backlash over Pincher. The Financial Times says ECB considers uh, blocking banks from cheap loan windfalls as rates rise. 
The Guardian revealed children of lone parents hard as heat by era of Tory austerity. I think we should bring in uh, Emmanuel Bello at this juncture. Bello, good morning. Glad to have you. Good morning. Join us and let's start, of course, as we usually do with this Danish paper. It says, Atiku, killings, insecurity persist because previous acts have not been punished. And then there were talks there about says authorities must go beyond issuing threats, like the president will always come and say, we can't tolerate this and all that, you know. Declares everyone is vulnerable. On PDP crisis, vows to bring party together under a formidable um, umbrella. Umbrella. I was just reading yesterday where Lalong was saying uh, that uh, Atiku calls himself a unifier, yet his party is in crisis. <laughs> All right, Andy, good morning. Uh, good morning. Welcome to a new week. Can I? Good morning. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, yeah, what you are seeing is a, a pushback by Atiku. You know, uh, before the weekend, before we uh, trailed off here, uh, he, he came under a lot of attacks. He came under a lot of, uh, the party itself came under a lot of attacks, especially with what's happening with Wiki, with party chieftains telling Atiku to, to do something about it. But he's taking a different route now. He's also uh, trying to present himself in this story, the lead of this day. He's presenting himself as a commander in chief. He's beginning to sound uh, that way because you know that's the biggest job uh, right now. And whether you like it or not, security is on the ballot. Uh, it's, security is going to be one of the biggest issue in this campaign. It's going to be the biggest talking point in this campaign. Unfortunately, too, for the ruling party, security will be one of the areas it will be defending itself uh, as it goes out uh, seeking votes. People are going to query the ruling party. Uh, they are going to question it. They are going to question its profile, what it's done, its, uh, its security uh, architecture, the failures or the success of uh, security under it. Don't forget that the APC ran strongly under the issue of uh, security that, you know, they have a general, a retired general, who is going to be able to provide us security, is going to protect us. Uh, but by and large, a lot of people have said it's failed. Uh, so the, 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 what Atiku is doing in this report is saying, look, I have better ideas. I, I, I can protect you better. And whether you like it or not, maybe even above economic issues, Nigerians are looking for someone who can provide them security, who can just basically protect them uh, from bandits, from killings, from all uh, the attacks uh, they are going through. So it's going to be such a huge issue going into the campaigns. And already Atiku is kicking it off, uh, kicking off that debate. Uh, remember that uh, President Obasanjo, the former President Obasanjo said that as far as he's concerned, um, the ruling party has lost the plot. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's overwhelmed. Uh, they don't have new ideas anymore. So Atiku is saying, look, I've got ideas. I know how this can be done. Uh, and he's preferring some of this solution. But he's taking a serious swipe at the ruling party and say, uh, we must go beyond talk. Talk is cheap. Uh, action is what is needed. And if you listen, Indy, you know very well that some of the things, you say some of them yourself, yeah. that's the sort of talking points we get after every attack, yeah. sounding like a broken record. You hear government saying, we'll do more. Uh, you yeah, hear yeah, this yeah, government, one of the, the different, yeah, exactly, one of the <laughs> president, uh, one of the things the president keeps saying, and his, uh, his backers and those uh, speaking for him, is that, look, if, if, if not, for the, if not uh, for the hard work of this government and the things they've done, it could have been worse. So you keep hearing that it's just like the police always telling you that if we had not come in, it would have been worse. But uh, victims don't think uh, anything could be worse than what is happening to them. Nigerians don't think anything could be worse again than what is happening now. But of course, maybe the worst is yet to come. But for now, Nigerians are going through this really, really grueling uh, crisis. And what Atiku is doing is saying that, look, I can be a commander in chief, and this is what you do. And he spoke about not just welfare of the, and he says something very catchy. He say, when a soldier is going to die for his country, he should know that he's not dying in vain and that his family is secure. That's very strong. And uh, what Atiko is saying is that, look, you have to build the morale and the courage of, this, of the fighting men and um, uh, honor them too in such a way that they will know that, look, their lives matter when they die, uh, you know, uh, 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 protecting us. Uh, as you find in other countries. So what Atiku is saying is that, look, I can do this job and I can protect you. And, uh, but of course, there are issues around this party itself. Uh, still on the topic of insecurity, Emmanuel, uh, a, a top church leader, uh, Pastor Inok Adobe of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, ha has had to clarify his position uh, on self-defense while he was uh, preaching uh, earlier. And last week, um, the Catholic Secretariat um, cried out that its priests are now endangered species. 
And this comes as we, we've, we heard in the news that two Catholic priests have just been kidnapped in uh, Edo State. Why this sudden interest in the Catholic Church and its priests in kidnapping them? You know, there was also mild drama yesterday in Abuja, even here in the nation capital in Abuja, when, um, you know, at the Central Rifle Catholic Church, when uh, someone just strayed in and he said, uh, you know, the church people, uh, church, uh, the worshippers believe he was, he was a bandit, uh, though the police said that, look, that's not the case. So, yes, there seems to be some kind of focus on the Catholic Church and its priests, and it's unfortunate. But that's just, uh, it's, that's just the tip of the iceberg. It's all of us. It's not just the Catholic priests. And yes, they have a right now to uh, uh, cry out. And as far as self-defense is concerned, you know the governor Botawali is so clear about it and he's continuously defending his position that look people need to get themselves armed people need to get ready uh, you know to protect themselves self-defense is now in the mix you have to do something about it it's a clear admission that look uh, those who have been paid to protect us have actually failed and that the government has not been able to do the very first thing it's supposed to do which is uh, uh, which is to protect us so and this is going back again to what I think uh, 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 candidate Atiku is saying that look, if you don't protect your people, if you don't provide them basic security, forget it. Uh, you are not the social, the social contract contract has been uh, breached by you because that's what we do. Uh, we we are not supposed actually to protect ourselves. Self defense, it's 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 there in the constitution, but. It's government. Government is supposed to actually provide security for individuals. That's what, that's at the heart of the social contract. That look, we surrender our will. We don't take the laws into our hand. Someone more powerful than us who's got resources uh, to protect us is supposed to protect us. That's the social contract. And now you are beginning to hear that even fundings, monies meant for uh, uh, security, are being stashed somewhere. Uh, one of the reports, reports saying that bring back Buratai, who was the former uh, chief of the well, of army, to say, look, answer for some of these things. So it's. It's a collection of things. It's a failure on every side. So whether it's the Catholic priest or the rest of us, uh, Kenneth, our concern now is who is protecting us and why we have so many questions now. Sadly, just little answer. One of them is what has happened to the funding, the huge funding that has gone into buying security um, to, 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 to secure this country. But now stories emanating shows that uh, that has not been done. Those are the sort of questions that you know, are in the minds of Nigeria as we look at the issue of uh, security. Uh, around the country. So you were talking, I remember Johnny Nash. There are more questions than answers. I'm sure you know that song. Yes. All right, uh, Punch. The Punch says PDP orders panel to beg Wike, drop a core, governor's loyalist insist. Is that obtainable? Is that possible? How does he drop a core now? I, well, he said the, the candidate himself is saying that look, let's, uh, that that's a no-go area. That he is not dropping anyone. And I think you know, Atiku likes to talk about taking tough decisions. You know, not popular decisions, not even decisions that will help him, but tough decisions. You know, and that's at the heart of leadership. You have to learn how to take tough decisions, even if they are not going to be very palatable that's ones. True. And one of them, of course, is that he's keeping his VP, and that he, the VP actually emerged from an election. So you cannot just drop him and replace him. Of course, they have uh, you know provisions for replacement uh, here and there but he's saying that look there was a credible election and Okowa emerged uh, uh, he emerged and of course uh, uh, he picked uh, his uh, his deputy uh, based on the elections that uh, you know he's, he's won so the idea of saying that look okay I'm going, I'm going to just drop him and pick wiki well, the, the, this candidate is saying, no, that's not it. But he's, he's willing to do other things. He's willing to meet with Wiki. He's willing to meet with everyone that disagrees. And he's saying that, look, I'm going to move this party. I'm going to build this party. And one other thing he's saying yeah, is that he's tying... I'm not cutting you, but one yes. paper says there's a rec reconciliation committee. He's going to head that committee. Yes, and that uh, but, but the BOT of the, of the party is saying, draw every other person from the six geopolitical zone and go to Wiki. Talk to him. Now, the, the problem in this is what if we can insist that he's not staying in the party and he's moving? Then the PDP will have to worry about uh, what he's going to lose, apart from uh, the millions or the, the, the money that <laughs> Wiki probably does, doesn't make a to, party. Yeah, I know, but Wiki, whether you like it or not, like the BOT is saying, Wiki is not yeah, someone that you are going to just. Yes, it's, and then those <laughs> votes in River votes State. River State but it, you can argue that Wiki doesn't own all the votes in River State. Yeah. You know, so, but I think you need him. He, uh, the, the BOT chairman calls him the pillar of the party. And then, like we talked, uh, Emmanuel, he, uh, I mean, he went to Kano State, and Nduje said to him, Yeah, you will come and canvas for votes, but you will lose. And you have to be a good loser. The question is, is he being a good loser now? And I think himself is, I mean, the article side is also saying that, look, this is not the first time uh, someone has been dropped from VP slot. I think himself, the candidate, was dropped one time. 
when Baba Gana King Ibe was picked. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there are ample examples for Wiki to walk around with and to accept defeat. Thank you so much for your take this morning, Emmanuel.